Hi, this is Chris Brown of Grandwork Tools, and um, I'm in the process of regulating a Steinway Concert Grand, which actually dates back to 1889, and along the way it's had several uh, additions and subtractions, which included a new uh, keyboard, probably in the 30s or 40s. Um, it was work pre-Teflon, but um, these are not the original keys. Um, and they are an accelerated action, which uh, affords a limited place to put lead in the key without removing lead. And um, in this case, the regulation uh, that I'm doing with replacement hammers. Uh, the shanks already chosen had 17 millimeter knuckles. The originals uh, would have had 15 and a half millimeter knuckles from knuckle to center pin. Um, so there's a geometry window in which this will work and this just fits into it by making the sharps uh, nearly a half inch tall um, there's still enough sharp above the naturals at dip and the dip is deep uh, measured at the very front of the key with a WNG dip block it's 430 so it's right on the outer edges of uh, of what is acceptable um, an advantage to that deeper dip is that there is more distance at the finger to control what you're doing. And at the other end, you have a, effectively a lighter hammer. Um, but in any case, um, a hazard of that is that you can't necessarily just leave things as they are. And in this case, there are a whole series of keys that don't have quite enough up weight um, because of that shift. And um, the original keyboard was pattern leaded. Um, there is an indication um, in one key where there was lead added to the back side of the key that somebody went through and corrected a lack of up weight in that original keyboard. But uh, so what do you do in the situation? Um, blindly taking a lead out of every key or more than one lead is just a huge amount of work that's very expensive and some of it is unnecessary. So I rough in the regulation to a place where uh, I can determine up weight and down weight. And uh, in this case, a balance weight of 37 will work well. So say the lowest keys have a minimum up weight of 20 grams and um, a pairing weight of 34 grams together, that makes uh, 54 grams down weight, 20 grams up weight. And um, I went through on that basis, incrementally increasing the up weight, which uh, decreases the pairing weight, um, keeping a balance weight of 37. And uh, Wherever the up weight was marginal or was slower than the down weight, um, I marked uh, the key for lead removal. And f more than that, I marked which lead to remove. And a way to do that, uh, if there's a, a, if it's just a little bit, you obviously remove the one closest to the balance. But if there's uh, a bigger discrepancy, you can actually put lead on the back side of the key um, at a distance that matches leads in the front of the key. Or you can just put it to where you want it and then measure that distance and measure out from the balance to find out which lead to remove. And um, actually, it's a process that was very quick. Uh, 
mostly I could just tell the ones that were too slow, they were a little bit too slow, and so it was automatically the first lead. Um, and so it, these are the keys that came out, and um, I was in the process of leveling the keys, and um, the top stack comes off to put, add the punchings, I'm not yet ready to flip, uh, to put them under the half rounds. But um, top stack is off, and so I'm taking this opportunity to remove the lead and plug so that when I'm done the regulation, I can just proceed with uh, way off. Okay, here are my marked keys. And um, <laughs> let me position myself around the camera. So you can see there's a mark that is essentially above that lead. Um, this one needed the second from the balance taken out. Uh, this particular key, the third. This key here needed, you know, I'm gonna remove that one from the back. It's unnecessary. And, um, and I've done some already. And I'm using just a sim simplest of jigs for this. Um, I have a block of, well, it's um, pin block material uh, with oversized hole drilled in it. And uh, a nice thing about, uh, about the Steinway system, at least for the half inch lids, is that they used a Forstner bit, which leaves a little breakthrough. So the lead only goes into the depth of the hole, but the point, the brad point, um, uh, sticks through a little bit. Now I take a uh, center punch, which has a little uh, point at the bottom of it, and I can feel where it is walks right into that, and that is the center of the hole, which is the center of where the lead is, and I push it through. And then I'm going to drill an oversized hole, 9 sixteenths, put a 9 sixteenths bung in it, trim the sides of it, and then way off and place my, I'm actually going to use copper, but place my replacement key lead, key weight, um, where it actually uh, fine tunes the um, the way off. So you can see this is this is not punitive. <laughs> Whereas if if you remove some out of every key, I mean it's more of this, but at the other end it's a lot more in the. Uh, drilling out of the holes and plugging. Uh, doing, doing this work at this time, okay, so here's a case where there is no breakthrough, but my mark is pretty much on center, so I just line that up, push it through. Um, it happens that I think a fair amount of the pattern leaded, leading uh, will be right on the money. I mean, it remains to be seen um, how tricky it will be to fit my weight in amongst the other weights. But I think that the majority of them, this will be plugged and it will be somewhere between here and here that the copper goes in. And um, it makes a nice job with little redundancy. And I don't have to take the action apart an extra time to do it. Okay, 